When it comes to load balancing and having a good load balancing design in place is obviously making sure that the devices that are going to be providing the request and or responses to the request, the servers themselves, are actually reachable, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, I'm going to jump over here to hosting clusters, and I've got one VM pulled up for Windows, and I've got this other VM here pulled up for, this is the other uh, host. So I've, one was supposed to be there for me to log in through NSX, and this one was for uh, vCenter specifically. So let me go ahead and launch the web console on this guy. Give that a second to pull up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you guys through basic service monitors, and we'll mess around with the capabilities of how this stuff works on the back end. So I'm going to go ahead and just minimize that for right now. What I'm going to do is over here on my NSX piece, I'm going to go to Networking and Security. If I come down to NSX Edges, and right now we're looking at the one armed load balancer. That is still what we have working from our previous video. I'm going to click on here, and if I come over here to Load Balancer, and I come down to here to Service Monitoring, right now I have a couple service monitors. And the way that service monitoring works essentially is this. You have a a type that you're going to monitor, you know, TCP, HTTP, HTTPS, etc. You have the interval, which is how often you're going to test or ping, because you can also do ICMP as well. So if you are going to do a, a test that's going to test the service every five seconds. The timeout is how long to wait before trying again. So it's going to be 15 seconds. So you're going to, you're going to test and you're going to wait 15 seconds and you're going to test again, you're going to wait 15 seconds, you're going to test again, and if you haven't gotten there, you're going to go through three retries and then you're going to consider it dead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a service monitor. The name of it here is going to be uh, one armed load balancer and I will select that guy from the drop down dash service monitor and then the interval is going to be, I'll say five seconds with a, let's, let's say, we'll test every two seconds, we'll timeout of every five. We're going to test for HTTP, and we're going to go ahead and click on add. So we're going to expect it to check it really quick. That's the goal here. Short timeouts. We should be knocking this thing out pretty quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to virtual servers. I'm going to go ahead and or sorry, in the pools, I'm going to go ahead and edit this guy. And on the monitor, I'm going to grab the one-armed load balancer service monitor. Click on save. And that's all I'm going to do. There's really nothing more to it than that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up that particular ESG. And I'm going to go ahead and look at my monitor and hit the enter key. Right now we're monitoring, everything's looking pretty good, right? And we're using the monitor that we just deployed. So if you were to do a show configuration for, let's see, does it give me the option of doing that? Load balancer, monitor. So we can see that the Load balancer where interval is a method of get. We're doing an interval of two, a max retries of three, a timeout of five. So it does take. Let's go ahead and go back over here. Everything's looking pretty good, right? So if I was to go to, let's say, win one, go ahead and log in here. What I need to do is I need to disable the HTTP service. So I'm going to click on tools. And then I go to IIS, or Internet Information Systems, which is right here. Once that pulls up, I will be able to make an adjustment to the configuration. So IIS pulls up. Let me go full screen with this guy. Let me go ahead and expand this guy out. It's going to take a couple seconds, but once I'm there, we'll be okay. Let's, uh, okay, so he's uh, finally caught up. All right, so no. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go to our site. Give that a second to pull up the default website. 
And what I want to do is I want to basically stop the website. So what should happen is we will stop the site, right? The stop the site has been stopped. By stopping the site, we won't be able to get any feedback from it. So what I'm going to go do now is I'm going <laughs> to hit the up arrow and after a short period of time, we should see that the one arm load balancer response should come back to not okay or down. Critical. That's a good sign, right? Hit the up arrow. It's critical, right? So server one is basically essentially down. So if I was to pull up a tab and type in 172.29.254, we get a response. And if I look at the, where the response is coming from, let's go ahead and look at the connectivity. I'm only going to be able to get responses from 16, right? And that's basically what's going to end up happening. So we're only going to get responses from 16. And this is why having service monitoring turned on is so critical, right? We see that the monitor is currently critical, saying, hey, the service is not responding. I'm going to go ahead back over to this guy. I'm going to go ahead and restart it. And as it's, it's continuing to go out there, I don't know if we'd be able to dive into this anymore. And then just that fast, it was able to pull it back up. If I pull up Chrome again and go out there and test it again, let's go ahead and retest, hit the up arrow a couple times. We can see now that, well, this time it, uh, it only sent the two connections. Let me go ahead and add another tab here real quick. Go ahead and 172.29, it pulls it up. We hit the up arrow. And we can see, okay, so it's actually polarizing at the moment, even though we are okay. It's polarizing the traffic to just the one servers. It might take some time for it to, to resynchronize. Let me go ahead and open up another web browser real quick. Go grab Firefox. And no, we're not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just plug in, jump over here. And we're going to go to 172.29.1.254. And it pulls up right away. We're going to hit the up arrow. And we can see, OK, there we go. So now, because we're using a different web browser, we can see that it is automatically popping up and giving us the other monitor. All right. Now, you'll notice that we are dealing with a weight. And you can see that it says WRR, which is weighted round robin. Let's talk about that for a minute. Let's come here, and we're going to go to our pool. We're going to click on edit and we have a bunch of different options that are available to us. We have round robin. We have, these are the load balancing methods that are available to us. Let's talk about those for a minute. So we have round robin, right? Round robin is the default, which basically is going to try to do an even distribution of connections to the servers in the server pool, right? Each member can be weighted and by default, everyone's got a weight of one, which means for every connection that you have coming in, every server is going to get an inbound connection, which is why we see the distribution being pretty good. Now, the drawback to this is, if I was to pull my pen tool out real quick and do a little bit of drawing, go switch over to black since it'll be easier to see. Basically what's gonna end up happening with round robin is if I have server one, server two, and then server three, and I have my load balancer sitting here and I have traffic coming in. If this guy's weighted with a one, this guy's weighted with a one, this guy's weighted with a two, that means he's gonna get more traffic than anybody else. So we're gonna have a connection coming in, a connection's gonna, gonna hit him, right? And then a connection's gonna go to him again, and then a connection's gonna go to him, and then a connection's gonna go to him, and then we're gonna come back over here. So he will always get double the amount of requests than everybody else. Okay, not cool, right? Now, the problem with this though is as you start to scale the number of connections, so let's say you're 200 or more. As connections start to fall off, let's say this guy's at 25, let's say this guy's at 20, this guy's at 15. Well, actually, let me make this a different. Let's make this 50 because he would have obviously more than these guys. Are these guys 
Are they being round robined? Well, it is round robin is working. However, it doesn't make it's not load balanced. It's load distributed, but it's not balanced. So another option for us to use would be you guessed it. We have least connections. Least connections means I'm going to look at how many active connections I currently have going through the load balancer and I'm going to make adjustments accordingly. So if I have this guy right here, this guy 25, this guy's got 20, this guy's got 50, basic math will tell you that server 2 will get the next inbound connection. And then it'll go to, you know, once server 1 and server 2 are more balanced and they're both the same, then it'll go to the, each one of these. And then as server 3, as its connections drop off, and he comes closer in line with these other guys, you'll start to see server three start getting utilized again. Another one is IP hash. IP hash simply means that you're gonna look at the source and destination hashing of the source and destination IP address, and you're going to start binding that to the same server. So the idea is to polarize traffic based off of where the source is coming from, because you can have the same destination but you might have lots and lots of sources, which is very realistic in, in a web scale type of environment. The other one that we have in here is URI, HTTP, header, and URL. What is the, what's the difference between those two? Well, basically what ends up happening here, let me go ahead and clear this off real quick. What basically ends up happening is you have a URL, right? You have a fully laid out URL. And this basically is going to mean you're going to have HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and I'll put in company dot com right and then you're going to have a forward slash and you're going to have some sort of folder or page that you're going to redirect to and let's just say we're going to have courses and then we're going to do a forward slash we're going to do a VMware And then specifically in that, you, you might have a couple of different types of VMware courses. So we're gonna do a question mark, and then we're gonna do an equal, or a question mark, and then a specific keyword. And the keyword will equal NSX, because that's what we're covering today, right? And I'm gonna put a dash V, because we're specifically focusing on NSX for vSphere. So the first portion here, this is the protocol. This is the protocol that the web browser is using in order to connect to this box. This portion right here, company.com, is the host reference. Which server am I trying to connect to? Is essentially what this is saying. Because you might have multiple servers. You might have time.company.com. You might have domain controller or dc.company.com. You might have you know, dns.company.com. You might have file.company.com, you get where I'm going with that. The back portion here, this this section right here, this courses and the VMware, this right here is the URI. The URI is gonna be a specific differentiator, right? Because not every web server is going to host the same web pages, right? And that's pretty common the URI is going to be a pointer. So if you're load balancing based off a URI, this is the portion that you're going to point to. The HTTP header is going to be your host reference, right? This is the HTTP header. You're going to focus off of that. I'll put HDR there, URI, and then the URL specifically is going to be this back half right here. That's the URL. And depending on which port, and let me go ahead and say URL over here, depending on which part of this entire breakout you're pointing towards in order to look for the load balancer to kick in and do, will determine how the load balancer is going to lay this out. I can't give you specifics. I really can't because the fact that it depends on your environment internally, this is going to require some testing and some of those type of capabilities that go into play with that. But these are some of the load balancing mechanisms that are out there that I think are rather important for you to be at least aware of and things like that. So these are the details that you need to have when it comes down to the, the details that come into play. Besides that, that's pretty much it. There are, there's a few other capabilities out there that I will briefly mention, 
Let me go ahead and clear the screen off real quick. One of the other options you have that we're not going to be testing out here, but the availability is there, is to do SSL offloading. So if we were to come over here to go to edit again, actually this will be on the the pool or the uh, the virtual server. Click on here. Nope, sorry, it's not there. Application profiles. That's where this was going to sit. We're going to come over here and go to edit. <laughs> Pardon me, I have this kind of annoying cough. And what this basically does is SSL offloading is when you're dealing with SSL offloading, if you were to come in here and do, say, HTTP, then you would have your HTTP redirect. If you come in here and do SSL uh, HTTPS offloading, what HTTPS offloading is essentially doing is saying, I don't want my clients trying to form an HTTPS connection with the web servers that are responding to the HTTPS requests, right? I don't want that to happen. I want the server, or I want the load balancer, to handle that. So you might actually have a scenario where the servers that are running inside your environment are not HTTP turned on, meaning that they are not running HTTPS. When would you might have that? Well, in a private environment, you might actually have that. Uh, do I recommend it? Eh, I mean, um, I, I've seen some interesting environments, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the wish you never saw it before. Um, but regardless of the situation, that's up to the client to figure out these details. So if you don't want these servers forming an HTTPS connection with the clients and you want to keep that kind of separated, you can actually offload that to the load balancer and the load balancer will handle that and then go through and do the connectivity to the servers themselves via HTTP. Now another one that comes into play quite a bit is going to be HTTP redirect, which is what this guy is. HTTP redirect means that in the event that somebody tries to connect to your pool of servers via HTTP, you're going to go, eh, not happening, and you're going to redirect them to the HTTPS server by having a redirect URL. So I'm not going to demo this for just the simple fact that it's a lot of legwork in order to get little labs like this done. I'm not really going to do that right now. I might come back and do it at a later point in time if I have the need to do so, but right now I don't. I get the general gist of the idea. And that's really all that you need to worry about. There is going to be a application profile that you can associate to the, the HTTP redirect. So if you have a specific pointer that you have in order to get to the specific URL, you can always point to that. I'm, and that ties into the when you set up these uh, the virtual server itself. I'm not going to demo that here simply for the fact that I don't have the environment set up to support it. So it's not that I don't want to, it's just that right now it would be a lot of light work to get it working. So if you want to test it out and then leave a comment in the comment section below and maybe throw it up in a blog and comment on it and associate your blog to the comment and be like, hey Rob, you commented on this in the video but you didn't demo it, but I went ahead and did, I will 100% pin that comment to the top, be like, hey guys, if you want to check how this works, here's how you do it. I will more than happy, more than happily point, I give you guys a shout out in a situation like that. But these are some of the capabilities that do come into play that I would recommend you be at least generally familiar with and how they operate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up our load balancing section. We are going to be diving into the next section, which is going to be the firewall. Now, my goal here in the next several videos is to knock out the firewall section, and I'm going to be focusing on more or less you know, how the firewall works. Then we're going to take a look at both the edge firewall and the distributed firewall. I will do my best to try to integrate as many of the features and capabilities as there might be. And then you and I are going to go and deploy a second data center so we can deploy things like Layer 2 VPN and IPsec VPN on the Edge Services Gateway and take a look at how all that comes into play. And then my last section will be the universal DLR and universal logical switch. So those are coming. It's just going to take us a little bit to get there. But we're definitely going to be knocking that stuff out. So until, until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. And I'll catch all of you in the next video.